Stop quivering, you coward. I can't. You got a gun in my face and I'm scared. Give me the codes to the safe or I'll blow your brains out. I have a fear. Okay, stop. <laughs> so, I'm not sure this scene is working yet. Yeah. Do we have a take where he says, my legs have gone all wiggly and I think I peed a little? Um... They did not. No matter what I'm working on, whether it's a movie or a show, a commercial, whether it's scripted, unscripted, long form, short form, whatever, I always run into this one thing. I need a particular line of dialogue and I just don't have it. Maybe they got the actor saying it on set, but a plane was flying overhead or someone else was talking over the line. Maybe it's a new piece of VO that wasn't previously recorded. Maybe we're rewriting a line entirely to play up a certain story point. Whatever it may be, at some point in every project, I end up needing to add in a line that didn't previously exist. And we call that temp ADR, short for automated dialogue replacement. More on that later. Usually this means recording myself saying a line or asking my assistant editor or recruiting someone else here at Moonshine to say it. Okay, so the line is, I can't, my legs have gone all wiggly and I think I peed a little. I can't, uh, my legs have gone all wiggly and I think I've peed a little. And then shoving that rough recording into the edit. Stop quivering, you coward. <laughs> Can't. My legs have gone all wiggly and I think I've peed a little. And then assuring the client that the line will be added to the creative ADR list and one day it'll be replaced with the actual talent re-recording the line. In the meantime, my temp ADR can be kind of jarring to the viewer, as we just saw. I can't. But the last thing I want during my edits is to take my producers or directors out of the viewing experience, especially when presenting a cut for the first time. So with the emergence of AI tools, it really got me thinking, what if we could use the actual actor's voice to temporarily replace or add to their own lines? I know this is a slippery slope towards more questionable implications of the technology, such as actor job security or deep fakes, but that's not where we're going. We wanna enhance the creative process, not undermine it. I wanna stress that this is not about replacing the invaluable talent and skill of our actors. It's about leveraging technology to provide a more seamless and immersive viewing experience during our rough cuts. We believe the final product should feature the authentic performances of our actors as we deeply respect and value their craft as we do our own. This is just a temporary solution during the pre-picture log phases until it's time to get the actual talent into the booth. So let's go take a look at some future tools and see if it can help us make our rough cuts a little less rough. I told you we'd get back to it. ADR, or automated dialogue replacement, is as old as sound in cinema. It's the process of replacing the original dialogue in a video or film with new dialogue to match. This can be used to fix poorly recorded audio, like when a mic goes out, or even used creatively to alter the tone or emotion of a scene by changing the dialogue delivery, allowing filmmakers to subtly shift the audience's perception of a character or event. Or my personal favorite application, backting. Roll it, Rob. Stop quivering, you silly little man. I can't. My legs have gone all wiggly and I've peed a little. What a dumb thing to say. Now, give me the codes to the safe. ADR is a process that requires precision, a lot of patience, and tight schedule coordination. Bless you, post coordinators. Since it's done way after the movie is wrapped and actors are often across the globe working on their next film. Sometimes it's just a single line. Hey, Christina, you ready to roll on take number one? I sure am. Most of the time, it's recorded in a nice soundproof bunkers like this one, matched a picture with little beeps. Rolling on take one. I have a family. Please not in the face. Give me the money. Do we get it? You're a one take wonder, kid. But let's just get one for safety. Aw, oh, thanks, director human person. And take two. Give me the money. But all of that recording with the original actors happens way after the cut has been picture locked. And in order to get picture locked, I need to sell my cut as best I can with a placeholder that'll determine timing. That's a creative leap of faith that directors, producers, and editors take every time. This extends to temping a lot of things like ADR, VFX, graphics, score, and so on. I want to leave as little to the imagination as possible so that whoever is watching, be it the director, producers, network, or studio, can see a version of the movie that is as close as possible to the final product as it can be during the offline edit to buy in on the story and let the other artists bring it home. On it. So the tool that we'll be using today is called Eleven Labs. It claims to harness the power of AI to generate realistic voiceovers capable of mimicking any human voice that you feed it. But it's not just about creating a voice that sounds similar. Eleven Labs attempts to replicate the tone, pitch, and even the emotional inflection of an original voice, giving us a temporary solution that's supposed to be close to the real thing. But let's see what it can actually do. 
Okay, so here's my timeline. We'll play a little bit of this back. Stop quivering, you coward. I can't, you got a gun in my face and I'm scared. And that's the line that we wanna replace. So what we need to do is make space for the new line because he doesn't actually say, my legs have gone all wiggly and I peed a little. So what we wanna do is use the other coverage to cover up the line that we wanna replace. Stop quivering, you coward. I can't. And right here's where the line will go now. So now what we need to do is create a sample of his voice that we could input into 11 Labs for it to analyze. I'll go over here to my footage. I'm just gonna grab all of it. New sequence from clip. Let's go through. Stop quivering, you coward. Let's grab this. I can't, you have a gun in my face and I'm scared. So I'm gonna grab a few clips, even if they're the same line, just different reads. Uh, just to create a good sample to put into 11 laps. I can't, you have a gun in my face and I'm scared. What we're gonna do now is export this as a wave file. So now that we have our sample created, we're gonna hop over here to 11 laps. We're gonna add generative or cloned voice. And we're gonna do instant voice cloning. I'm gonna call this one Drew. Drew sample one, awesome. One thing that I think is important to note here is that you do have to have consent to use somebody's voice and that you are not allowed to use it for any legal, fraudulent, or harmful purposes. I'm using this for fun as a test um, with Drew, who I do have consent to use his voice from. I confirm and consent the use of my voice in support of those whose legs are wiggly. All right, and so now we're gonna click on use. We're gonna use Drew's voice. And the line that we want him to say is, my legs have gone all wiggly and I think I peed a little. I don't know if an exclamation point does anything, but we're gonna do it. And now we're gonna hit generate. My legs have gone all wiggly and I think I peed a little. Kind of sounds like a girl. Um, I am gonna pull the stability down a bit. The clarity should be pretty good, but I have good results when I put it around 50. So let's try again. My legs have gone all wiggly and I think I peed a little. Sounds more like a girl now. My legs have gone all wiggly and I think I peed a little. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna keep hitting generate and see what we get. Maybe I need to shorten this a little bit, we'll see. My legs have gone all wiggly and I think I peed a little. Closer. My legs have gone all wiggly and I think I peed a little. <sighs> My legs have gone all wiggly, and I think I peed a little. I think we're gonna be here for a while. My legs have gone all wiggly, and I think I peed a little. So it's actually, like, picking up his intonation really well. He just, it's just not getting the voice right. My legs have gone all wiggly, and I think I peed a little. <laughs> <laughs> I might add another sample here. Let's see. Okay, so now I've made my second sample. I'm gonna come over here to edit and upload a new file. Let's see what happens. My legs have gone all wiggly and I think I peed a little. Hmm, okay. Let's get a little more stable. Let's bring that down. My legs have gone all wiggly and I think I peed a little. <laughs> uh, my legs have gone all wiggly and I think I peed a little. Well, maybe we'll try that one. Okay, let's see if any of these are gonna work. I don't think they will, but I don't know. My legs have gone all wiggly and I think I peed a little. I think that might be the one. My legs have gone all wiggly and I think I peed a little. <laughs> oh, that one's just for me. That's right. Okay, so let's try this one. Let me just drop this in. Can't. My legs have gone all wiggly and I think I peed a little. Give me the code to this. I mean, it's not good, but it's not bad. I don't think anybody's gonna believe it, but it's better than me. Just for fun, I wanna see how it does with my voice. You men are all the same. Your eyes are too big for your stomach. Honestly, I feel like I kinda yeah. said the line wrong. What if I make myself say, your eyes are bigger than your stomach, which is what I meant to say. Your eyes are bigger than your stomach. Okay, it's not terrible. Your eyes are bigger than your stomach. Doing better than it was with Drew's voice. Your eyes are bigger than your stomach. I can try that one. Your eyes are bigger than your stomach. Not terrible. 
Let's see if we can do it with one of those. Your eyes are bigger than your stomach. I think that one's gonna be the one. See if I can get the first part of your to really try to sell this thing. You men are all the same. Your eyes are bigger than your stomach. Let's try another sample. Oh, your eyes are bigger than your stomach. So this is what we end up with. Stop quivering, you coward. I can't. My legs have gone all wiggly and I think I peed a little. Give me the code to the safe or I'll blow your brains out. I have a family. Please not in the face. Give me the money, but I ate too much. You men are all the same. Your eyes are bigger than your stomach. So what did we learn? It works really well in limited applications, most certainly scratch VO, or off-screen dialogue with limited emotional range. Is it replacing anyone? No. But does it help me with the editorial process? Absolutely. This is an incredible tool that can really sell my early edits. Love it or hate it, the sound work, even in my rough cuts, has a big impact on selling my work to the creatives. It allows them to stay in the scene and actually give notes on things that matter. But let's break it down, what we like and what needs improving. It does sell the cut better, and it pretty accurately mimics voices, at least enough that it isn't as distracting as adding in my own voice. And you do need written consent to feed a person's voice into the tool, and we appreciate that protection. It doesn't really do well with heavy accents, and it can only mimic emotion that it's fed. You can't make it sound angry if your samples don't contain angry dialogue. It does take longer than just recording scratch, at least on the front end, but we think it's worth it. And the parameters you can control are limited. You can't control cadence, so it's not great for on-screen dialogue or an instance where you need to match lips. So, a lot to improve, but this tool shows promise. We're excited to see how everything pans out and explore how it can be applied in our work in the future to tell the best stories possible. Now we want to hear from you. Have you used AI tools in your post-production process? And what was your experience? How do you think AI will shape the future of our industry? Moonshine intends to find out, or at least keep exploring. Let us know in the comments. And if you found this video fun or helpful, give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe for more insights into post-production at Moonshine Post. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Punch, 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 gun clinch. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> I, I, I forgot the <laughs> oh, You men are all the same. You can't remember your fucking lines. It's like, <laughs> it's like what?